YOLO Composing Gloves here, and today I'm gonna show you how I use the Focusrite Mix Control, the Scarletti Mix Control, and I'm gonna show you how to do low latency monitoring, which is something that's just fabulous. I'm also gonna explain just how the Mix Control works because it's kind of confusing, and there's a couple of shortcut keys that you have to know. There's no other way to do it, and, they, and also I'm gonna show you uh, how the outputs work. So I'm gonna be explaining some of the more advanced features, or just the features in general, and so if your interface doesn't have all these features, don't worry, most of it will apply to you. And the low latency monitoring, say you say you have a guitarist come in and they, they plug in through like, maybe they have an amp in a cab sim. So they're just gonna plug in, so they're gonna need to monitor. Or if you have a singer and they plug in and they wanna monitor and the latency through your DAW is throwing them off, there's actually a way to monitor directly from the interface that has really low latency monitoring. If you wanna process the signal though through your DAW of choice, then there will be the latency from your DAW because you're gonna have to use that. But there's actually a really great option. So let's go ahead and open up the mix control. So I'm just gonna pull that up here. And so I'm rocking a Focusrite 18i20. You may have some other one. I've used almost every single one in the Focusrite line or I have friends that have the other ones. And the rules are the same from pretty much everything. So once you have your mix control, and assuming you didn't get that stupid no hardware detected thing which can, can plague you for some time, we have here the ability to open some mixes. So you see here I have mix one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, except for there's no even numbers. I don't know why there's no even numbers. Even number mixes are high profile. You gotta know a guy if you wanna get to those. And we see here on the top here, we have our input. So we have our channels and on each channel we have our input. So we have inputs and we have all the analog inputs from your interface. And we also have the DAW inputs. Now the DAW inputs, the way they work are, cause that, that's kind of confusing, like what are these things? Well, DAW one and two refers to the, the stereo out of your first DAW that's open. So I have two DAWs open right now. I have two instances of FL. So. DAW one and two refers to the first one. So you see here I have DAW one and two, and right now no audio is coming through. But if I go to that instance, so this is the first one I believe, this is the second, uh, oh no, this is the first instance. So if I go ahead and play some sound, I'll just uh, play a kick drum here and bring this up and hit play. And, and you will see, bam, there it is, it's coming in. I also have this coming out as separate input, which is why you saw it coming in seven and eight. I do that for monitoring purposes, but uh, when I'm recording two laptops, it's another thing. But anyways, you saw that DAW one and two worked here. Now if I choose DAW three and four, it's gonna pick up the, the, second, the second DAW. So this is the first stereo out, this is the second stereo out, and this is the one that's running my voice, so you can see my voice coming out of this one pretty darn nifty. So that's what the different DAW inputs do. The regular inputs are just regular inputs. So for example, if I pick analog input three, that's the one this microphone, which is off screen, if I like to move it up, that probably sounds loud. Anyways, it's a little bit off screen, but if I choose that, you're gonna see analog input three, and that's coming through right now, and the other one's DAW four, so now this is kind of confusing. I'm gonna just turn these off though. And so I'll do analog input three over here. So here's here's my mic. And then I also have it, so here's my mic going through FL Studio. Um, and so what you can do is you can set up your inputs and set up a mix. So like I could say, oh, I want so much of analog one. So maybe I have a mic on analog one and this much and that much. And then I can send it to different outputs, which are these guys down here. These are all your outputs. I don't have these enabled right now, so I can't use them because uh, I don't have the gear for it. But up here I have like my, my hardware outputs and you see a couple of them have headphones next to them. That means it's your headphone output. So output seven and eight on the back of my interface, you'll have, you'll have outputs like there labeled, you know, output seven, output eight, but so on and so forth. And that means that these are receiving that. So for example, if I'm recording and for whatever reason, I, ha I don't have it set up like this, but let's just say I had my voice coming in and I wanted to, I wanted to monitor my voice at the same time. I wanted to monitor um, at the raw voice. So I have voice coming like that I'm speaking into the mic and then I have my voice out of FL. Maybe I wanna just hear the voice out of my mic. So I could pick analog input three and then Right now, this is in mix one. There's no like master fader here. It's just, this is mix one. 
Um, there, that, that was kind of confusing for me at first. It seems like this is like some sort of master fader. That is not a master fader. And so this is coming out in mix one. So I can take my headphone out and I can select mixes and say, hey, choose mix one left. And this is the left channel and this is the right channel. That's why the headphone is in the middle. And so I can have it choose right and then bam, I am now monitoring the left and the right of my inputted voice. And I've turned it up here so I can hear it. You can't hear it because it would be coming out my headphone outputs, my headphone on the front end outputs seven and eight on the back, but not out the monitor. So you won't hear it. Now I'm actually not, rec I don't believe I'm recording out that. I'm recording out lines uh, three and, no, seven and eight into the OBS. Anyways, that's something else. But you get the idea. So let's say you had a guitarist or a singer and they wanted to monitor out their headphone out. Well, they're probably gonna be using the second headphone out. So you could simply make a mix where you turn up their mic and then just include DAW one and two so that when you hit play, they can hear that. And then just go ahead and output that mix to their headphones and bam, you have a low latency monitoring mix so that they can hear it and this will output directly through. Now, when you're recording in FL though, you gotta make sure that you mute the mic. So for example, um, otherwise they're gonna hear two of themselves and one will be slightly behind the other and that'll be disorienting. So here I've got an instance where I'm recording out and what I do is, they've actually changed this with pre and post, but uh, out of habit, I still do this. So I can record enable this. I'm recording through OBS, which is why it's not record enabled, but I'll just route it to the channel next to it and then I'll mute that channel and leave this channel on so it goes out the entire recording chain. And then I can record without them having to hear it. Uh, that's why the master channel is actually muted right now. So that's how you set, set up a, like a, a headphone mix if you need to set up a headphone mix really easy. Uh, let's go ahead and cover a couple other bases. So one thing that I'm doing is I'm actually recording through my processing in FL Studio, something you probably want to do at some point if you ever plan on like recording tutorials or something. And so the way I did this was I took analog input three, which is my mic, and then I am sending, I have turned that off. So I'm not monitoring it anywhere in here. No mix is monitoring this. And then in the DAW, I'm receiving analog input three on the channel that I wanna hear it on. So it's coming out. And then at the bottom here, I am taking a different output. I'm going out lines three and four. I am not going out the monitor outs, which is where this is going out. So instead of muting this, I really could just turn off the monitor outs, but uh, I'm gonna show you why you may not wanna do that a little bit later. So anyways, I have this coming out lines three and four. You can't do mono, so I can't do just line three. I wish you could, FL is weird like that. So it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of weird. Only stereo support is like strange. So lines three and four coming out. And then what I did was I took line three on the back of my interface. I took the output and I plugged that into the input of channel four. So channel four is now getting the FL output. So I'm hearing the FL stuff. And then whenever I wanna hear or record that, like an OBS here, I've got, if we go to uh, properties, you see I have USB 2.0 mic four, not mic three. And if I wanted to monitor that, I would just come in here and change this to inputs mic four. So I'm actually taking, and you notice it's a little more consistent volume and a little bit louder. And I'm actually just taking the output and routing it back in. That way I can go through FL. So that's a handy way of doing it uh, right there. Now, you have over here the ability to copy selected mixes. And so what it does is let's say that you're setting up a couple, a couple mixes for something. Then what you can do is you can actually have it so that mix one can change a bunch of mixes. So say you've got like, you know, your first two mics here, maybe they're singers and then your second one has drums and the drums want to hear the singers. And so you say, okay, well, I'll control the singers here. And then what you can do is you could say, okay, you can send a copy of this mix over. So let's say I, I bring this up. So here's some of the mix coming through. And now in mix three, it's, it will come through here as well. That mix will be copied. So if I take this and I say copy to mix and I say mix three stereo, now on mix three, it's coming through. And you see here at the top, I'm able to select output. So I can output this directly of a specific out as well. 
So besides using these, which can be a little tedious, you can actually select additional outputs here. Now there's something you need to know about this whole process. It's that these faders do not need to be up for other programs to get a hold of it. Like for example, mic four or mic three isn't on anywhere in here. This can still get to it. And so this can cause issues with hearing things twice. And this plagued me like crazy when I was new. So I had no idea where this second noise was coming from. So this thing was actually accidentally putting out to additional places. Like I would have um, the monitor outputs on here and the monitor outputs are these two right here and these are what come out your speakers. So there's, there's gonna be a port on the back that says like main outs or monitor outs or, or something. And that's basically what you plug into to set up your, your monitors. And so when you do that, I always thought, you know, oh, so this is what's coming out my monitors, nothing else, but that's not true. You could send other stuff out your monitors here and you can individually send programs out your monitors. So even though this is DAW technically three and four in the Scarletti mix control, this is still coming out monitors one and two if I turn this off, it'll still come out there. And the same thing for the other one. In fact, I can go to any channel and select monitor one and two out and it will come out my monitors. So it's not like the Scarletti is like the only thing. And a lot of times it was actually the Scarletti that was screwing me over. I couldn't find what was going wrong. So anyways, that's the outputs. That's the mixers. I really quick want to explain the pre-fader mix. So here I've got analog input four and you maybe you have a noisy line somewhere that's making noise on one of your mics. You can actually just come in here and just hit pre-fader listen and you see it'll swap your monitor output to whatever input it is so that you can really quick listen to it. This is a feature I don't use. It's, um, if that's what PFL stands for though, you use it in the studio. Um, pre-fader listen, basically you listen to the input, it skips the fader. But yeah, you have a pre-fader listen and it's kind of a bummer there's not like, um, well, I guess they don't have that many headphone outs. So these would be basically your auxiliary sense, but it'd be kind of cool if it was a little, a little more flexible of a mixer. Anyways, so this, this whole bit here is actually like completely optional. It's really these outputs that I find myself touching the most often. And I only really touch the mixes when I'm setting up something for um, dealing with latency as best I can. I also really quick want to talk about the monitor controls. So these control, these separate outputs on the back of your hardware and the color they are matters. So if it's blue, the output of this particular output, so like channel, for example, three, that would be affected by this gain knob. So as I move the gain up and down, output three would change its level with the gain. Uh, so for example, that's recording my voice right now. So if I turned it bright, when I say blue, I'm like, this is blue. I call these ones silver or like light blue, I guess. But this is, I'm gonna call these silver. So if I click three, my voice comes back. Okay, so that's pretty simple. However, that sucks if I'm trying to record something independent and I just want this to control the volume of my monitors. So in order to fix this, you can shift click it, which I found out by accident. I wish it was there was a more obvious way, like a right click menu would have been really great. Some, this is like a, a freaking mystery. Well, I don't know, this is really bad design. I don't know why they did it like this. But uh, basically you shift click and now it's independent of the gain knob. So if I turn this down, I can affect my monitor levels and the signal is not affected by this knob. That's really important for a lot of things I wanna do. So most of my buttons are this gray color. Blue means it will be affected by this. And of course, if you click it and it turns red, like let's just like mute 10. So 10 turns red, but look, if you click again, it turns blue. So this is one thing I, I honestly really dislike about this software. You've also got a pad, the ability to switch between control with the physical knob and with the digital knob. So if I turn this off, I can move it around and change the volume that way. If I turn it back on, it's not gonna, oh, there it goes, Never mind. it turned back on. Sometimes I have to close it and open it for in order to go back to the hardware. And then we've got dim, that's for your, like your output monitoring for your monitors. And we've also got like mute, right, mute mono. So all that stuff is in there, pretty obvious controls. I said I wasn't gonna explain them, but there's the explanation. And that's pretty much what you do. If you have any questions about this, let me know. That's pretty much the software in a nutshell. That's how I use it. Subscribe and have a blessed day.